Hi, just like you requested, no intro, straight to the point. This is the mirror so many of you have asked me about. I personally think it's the number one mod you should do to any car. Why? Because you and the people around you on the road will be safer when you drive with it, as you might avoid an accident due to the blind spots being minimized. And in case an accident does happen or anything else really that takes place in front or behind your car, it'll be recorded. I'm guessing that just like with backup cameras, all cars will eventually come with this pre-installed. In this video, I'm using the Ventop H612T dual Dutch cam rear view mirror. But I've noticed it has been sold out for a while now. Not sure if they'll be selling this model again. But this video applies to pretty much any similar unit. I'll explain some things in the tips section. But if you're going to search it, search rear view dash cam 4K. This is how this particular model comes. This is not an unboxing, so it's already open and all. Now I'm gonna show you what you're able to see with a normal rear view mirror versus what you can see with this unit. So how much do I trust this thing? Well, I've bought five of these. Besides the one in my car, I have one installed on my motorcycle. One on one of my e-bikes. And I bought two as gifts. One of them paid itself in a matter of weeks as the driver was rear-ended and the camera helped show proof in a somewhat crazy case that I can't discuss yet, but I will once I'm able to. Stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link to the video of that accident in the description. Installation is really easy. You don't need to remove the old mirror. In fact, it's installed over it, so it actually needs it as support. You're gonna hide the cables behind the molding. Very easy to do, just tucked in, no parts to remove. I have the power going to the left. You should have two cables to hide as much as you can, three if your unit has a GPS module. But please, before you install that, watch until the end in the tip section where I mention something extremely important about the GPS module. The connection for the rear camera is hidden in the same way but to the right.
just playing with the options a bit. Very straightforward operation with straightforward settings. You have different options such as different resolutions, video encodes, boot sound, and things like that. If you can operate the smartphone, this is 10 times less complex than that. And this is pretty much it. Again, very straightforward. However, possibly the most important part of the video, the tips. And the tips won't just help you make it more convenient, they can save you from major headaches that can make the difference between these things making sense or not. After using this for three years, I can save you from these headaches. But before we get there, please don't forget to like or share or comment or subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithms get my videos exposed to everyone out there. It's free to you. I'm putting a lot of effort, time and money into making these videos. My videos are not even monetized, at least as of the time of this video being uploaded. It would be fantastic if you help me getting noticed out there. Don't get a cheap model. I've seen them for as low as 60 US dollars. Don't. You want reliability and quality both when recording and when looking at the screen. If you get one like mine with two resolution options of 4K plus 1080p or 2K plus 2K, use the 2K plus 2K option. The 1080p is way too low for moving objects and you want to be able to read license plate numbers. 2K is enough for that, 1080p, not really. Mount it as high as possible so it works like a real rear view mirror. Unless your car doesn't have backup camera and you absolutely have to have it. Some people mount it by the license plate. When you do that, you'll be seeing the grill of the cars behind you. If your car has a rear windshield wiper, find out the actual wiping track, I'm going to call it. I installed my rear camera exactly in the middle, and when it rains, more than half of the rear camera view is not visible due to the wiper not clearing out the entire field of view. In my previous car, the center of it worked perfectly. Due to my OCD, I might leave it as it is, not sure. If it bothers me a lot, then I'll move it a couple of inches to the left. Right now, when it rains, I just turn the screen off. Get a good micro SD card. Again, you want to have this set up to be as reliable as possible. And the micro SD card that you use is a huge part of this. Get a micro SD card slot extension cable so it's easier to pull out and back in the micro SD card when needed. Also, my unit had a real weird thing going on that when it was really cold outside, it wouldn't record until warming up several minutes later. Once I started using this micro SD card slot extender, I never had that problem again. I accidentally fixed that issue. If you get my model or similar, turn off speech recognition. It'll recognize random words when you're talking, even from the lyrics of the music you're listening to, and it'll start doing random things. If your unit has GPS module, don't connect it. You might incriminate yourself. Let's say you got into an accident. Even if the other driver caused it, and you were driving just five miles per hour over the limit, now that it's proof that you were speeding and you might be found at fault. Remember, you can quickly turn the display off and use it like a regular rear view mirror. Tilt the actual mirror, not the camera, either up or down, depending on whether you have a sunroof or not. If it's straight, the way the regular mirror will be positioned, you will see the display image along the actual mirror's reflection. 
And lastly, keep in mind that sources of light that are too bright, such as high beams behind you at nighttime, won't look great. It look like a big mass of light instead of the two headlights you'd see with a normal rear view mirror. And this is it friends, if you want to see how it works on the motorcycle, I'll leave a great link to a great video about that. That great video is mine, of course. If you want to see how it was installed on my e-bike, stay tuned because I do have a video about that planned as well. Just working on my backlog of videos right now. I need my days to have more hours. As usual, let me know in the comment section if any questions. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. This dude is going the wrong way. Holy sh!